there, I'm Tracy Reed and I want to talk to you today about templates. Templates are great tools to make quality, visually appealing layouts quicker and easier than starting from scratch. Templates come in many forms to suit all different types of scrapbookers and can be used in so many ways that no layout made with the same template ever has to look exactly the same. That's right, I'm going to show you simple ways to change up any template to suit your needs so that you never have to toss a template you love away again in fear that your entire album will look the same. I'm going to be using this template by Janet Phillips at the Sweet Shop. It's piece number three from piece eight of her Scrap Your Heart Out number five collection. And I'll be showing you how I got from this original template to this layout using Fourth and Inches by Heather Roselli and Megan Mullins, also from the Sweet Shop. To do this, I will first be going through all seven tips for changing up your templates individually, and then I will show you a process video at the end so you can see how the original template evolved into my finished layout step by step. So let's start with tip number one. Rotate that template. What if you have a template that you love and the orientation just doesn't work for the pictures that you're trying to scrapbook? Does that mean that you have to skip it and use another template? No, just rotate it. Rotation can be done in a variety of ways. Here is the same template rotated 90, 180, and negative 90 degrees. And then the original template again flipped horizontally, vertically, and then just the photos rotated 90 degrees. As you can see, just the simple act of rotating a template can change the whole look and feel of a layout and allow easily for different photo orientations. Tip number two is resize your cluster. If you resize the cluster of embellishments and papers on your template, you can give the layout an entirely different feel and allow for things like more journaling or photos as well. In this template, I've resized just the photo and paper strips cluster smaller, resized the entire template smaller, and resized everything except the photos. And when you look at the corresponding layouts, you can see how this change has an emphasis on the photos, papers, and embellishments in the layout. Tip number three, add photos. With most templates, it's fairly easy to add a photo here and there. If you need more photos to tell your story, don't be afraid to just add some to the template. Just because it started as a two photo template doesn't mean it has to stay this way. For example, I duplicated the original photos and embell er, vertically, horizontally, and even enlarged the one photo to make it wider. Play with your photos in your templates to fit what you need to scrapbook. Tip number four, resize your template. The vast majority of templates out there come as 12 by 12s, but what if you're an eight and a half by 11 scrapper, or you want to use a template as a four by six project life card or brag book? The process is simple. Here are three examples of how I modified the template to fit eight and a half by 11, five by seven, and four by six sizes, and their corresponding layouts. Let me show you how I did that in just two simple steps. First, you want to resize your image to the shortest length of your new layout dimension. So in this case, since I'm forcing this 12 by 12 layout into an eight and a half by 11 size, I would change the image size to eight and a half by eight and a half. Next, transform the canvas size to 11 inches tall. By transforming the canvas and not the image size, you will not distort the layout and instead be left with this perfectly proportioned 8.5 by 11 layout to build on. Tip number five, recluster your template. Perhaps this original template isn't messy enough for you, or you like more embellishments and photos on your page. That doesn't mean that you can never use a simple template, but rather that you can build on that simple template by reclustering your template and adding depth and movement. Here are some ways in which I reclustered the original template. I duplicated and rotated the main cluster once, then twice, and finally a third time, this time staying true to the more paper block style of the original template. Let me show you how I did that. Here's the original template. Step number one, Duplicate and rotate the original cluster to create a second cluster and move it out of your way. Step number two, flip the original cluster horizontally. Step number three, move it to the left side of the canvas. Step number four, move the second cluster to the right side of your canvas and align it with the bottom edge of the photos in the original cluster. And step number five, 
Arrange the paper strips of the second cluster below the photos of the original cluster and voila, a totally new template. Tip number six, change up your paper and photo spots. Who says that just because a rectangle on a template is labeled a photo that you have to actually put a photo there? Think outside the box and stick your papers or embellishments where your photos go and your photos where your papers go. Here are three examples where I changed up the template in just that way. First, I made the paper spot a place for an extra large photo and replaced the second photo with a journaling card. Then I decided to remove that journaling card altogether. And finally, I made the remaining photo wider. Don't be afraid to adjust your template to match the photos that you have selected and also the embellishments you want to use. Tip number seven, add to and change your template. On this original template, there are very few places marked out for embellishments and none for journaling. That doesn't mean it has to stay that way. First, I changed out some of the paper strips to ribbons instead. Next, I replaced the provided paper piece flower elements with themed embellishments from the kit instead, and then I added even more embellishments and journaling to boot. Just because there's no place for it on the template doesn't mean that you can't add to it. Templates are great starting points for layouts and don't have to be used straight out of the box. Whew, okay, so we've covered all of my tips for changing up your templates. Let's see how I put them all into action and went from this to this. So as you can see, I have the original template open here and I'm going to start by duplicating the photo layers and adjusting them and rotating them to my own personal preference. So I decided to break up the cluster and I'm deleting all of the excess embellishments and title that I'm not going to need for to complete my layout. So now I'm going to start dragging in the photos that I want to use. Um, beginning with this one and I clip it to the main photo spot and then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and in Photoshop when you directly drag um, a photo onto the canvas on a Mac it converts it to a smart object which is a really great way to do things because um, later if you decide you want your photo or embellishment larger it can go back up to the original 100% size um, without any sort of degradation of the image. So I normally drag and drop all of my photos and embellishments directly onto my canvas so that they convert to smart objects and I have that option later on down the line. So as you can see I'm using the main background paper as a photo instead of a background paper. Um, I decided that that picture of Josiah with his football was totally cool and I wanted to really show it off. So now I'm going to start dragging in and clipping my papers to the um, spots where I want them on the layout. And instead of using those, um, a few of those paper strip um, placements there, I'm going to use them as ribbons instead of um, papers. So I'm going to drag and drop my ribbons on there instead of papers as well. So here's one, two, three, a rig rack. And then I'm going to go in and delete these extra strips and move the ribbons around so that they align the way I want them to. And then I'm going to finish bringing in papers to clip to the scallops. <coughs> and so now I'm ready to start embellishing my layout. And I'm going to deviate pretty highly from the original template now because I like a lot of embellishment on my layout. So I'm going to add a frame underneath this photo here just as a um, added little pop of depth when I add my shadows. And of course I have to cluster up here in the corner just like I'm going to down in the bottom. So I'm going to add a football helmet and a button. And then I'm going to open up the word strips and add this touchdown word strip as well. Resize it a little bit and rotate it. And now we're ready to start adding other embellishments. And um, I decide at this point to start bringing in the um, journaling card and building my title up. Um, I'm going to, eventually the layout is going to say keep calm and play football, but it's not going to have that football on the card. I'm going to do football as the title using the alphabet. 
but first I'm going to start clustering and bringing in some extra embellishments before I add the title. So I add the star and now I'm thinking about what else I want to add and uh, okay I'll do the title now. So I resize the letters a little bit smaller and I'm going to arrange them just like where the title was on the template at the bottom of the photo right here and duplicate and I need to duplicate the L. If you hold down command and alt or um, control and alt while you drag it will automatically duplicate whatever it is that you're dragging so that's how I do that quickly and now I need to um, get rid of the football on the journaling card so I just take a red paintbrush and erase it on the journaling card because you're not going to really be able to see anything on the journaling card it just kind of gets rid of the white letters and I'm going to string this banner through my football title um, just to give it that extra depth and some of the letters will go on top of the banner and some will go below the banner and then I'm going to finish my embellishment. So I need a little button to cover up the end of that banner. And then I'm going to need some more embellishments to create a little bit more of a balance down there in that bottom right hand corner. So I use the foam finger, resize it because I don't like really huge embellishments. Then I duplicate the red button, move the foam finger over can't decide where I want it <laughs> to create the best balance so here we go back and forth back and forth oh well then I guess I'll just move this whole title over make it a little bit bigger and because they were added as smart objects I can resize it bigger um, and there won't be any image degradation where it would be if they were just images on the canvas so now I'm blending the main picture into the background of the paper and I did that by changing the blend mode to overlay and reducing the opacity a little bit. And now I'm ready to add in my journaling. And I duplicate the journaling a couple times so that you can see it and it stands out a little bit better on this busy background. And then I find this brush in the kit and I think it's a great addition on top of that photo. And so I'm ready to um, start adding my shadows. And I just add my typical shadows in there and I, I can go back in now and adjust things and adjust the shadows as I see fit. But here is the um, layout as it's completed and we're going to go back and compare it to the original template, layout, template, layout. And there you go.